If you're just starting off in the world of miniature tabletop wargaming, the hobby can look a little bit intimidating. We're here to help you get started. Over a series of quick, beginner-friendly videos, Keith and I will teach you how to make all of the terrain and buildings that you see on this table. And we'll do it all on a budget, using basic craft materials and novice techniques. This is the first in a five-part series where we focus on the terrain you can make for our free Raven Feast Viking rules. In this video, let's start with the three most important, most essential items you'll need in miniature wargaming, from Vikings all the way through World War II. You need a ground cloth to cover the table, some hills to go underneath, and you need some trees. Lots of trees. Every battlefield needs trees. Hey, wait a second. This table looks a little bit different than I remember. Well, that's right. Uh, before you set up your own wargame at home, your table is going to look like this. Plain, boring, and flat. Our three essential terrain basics will change all that. Let's start with the ground cloth or mat, and you can make your own like this, or you can just buy one. Here you can see a variety of mats we've purchased in the club, and you can find these in lots of styles from a number of different manufacturers. Prices range anywhere from $50 to $100. We'll have links in the video description below where you can go to buy some of these mats, like this winter scrub mat from Cigar Box Battle, which we do highly recommend. But in this video, why don't we let Keith tell you how he made his mat? You'll want to visit a local fabric store and go straight for the value section. Your two best options will be felt or plush felt, also known as teddy bear fur. So right here, I'm just holding regular felt. Uh, this is an olive green felt that I lightly spray painted with brown spray paint, and it only took about two minutes. And this is the teddy bear fur option, or plush felt. I lightly sprayed an even coat of green floral spray paint on the plush felt to give it some color. The key here is to keep the can moving and not overspray any one area too heavily. We're going to use Keith's homemade mat as our ground cloth in today's video, but in addition to the cloth, you're also going to want some hills and slopes to put underneath. We like to use one inch polystyrene insulation, and you can buy sheets of this material at a home improvement store and cut it into whatever shape you want. You just have to angle the edges with a sharp knife and use sandpaper to round them off smoothly. You can use whatever size hills that you want and arrange them underneath the ground cloth. You can even stack a couple of hills on top of each other if you like. And you don't have to use uh, this pink foam material. You can use any kind of styrofoam. And if you're really in a pinch, grab a book off a bookshelf. Finally, the third terrain essential are trees. I want to confess right away that all of our trees are purchased, not homemade. Now there are methods to make your own trees, and I've tried many of them over the years, and I love building terrain, but this is something I think you should buy. That's right, and you are going to want probably a couple dozen of them, so you're going to need a whole box. Most of the trees in our club are from a company called Woodland Scenics. They make model railroad supplies, and their value packs of trees are hard to beat. We highly recommend them. And no, we don't receive a commission or a referral fee from Woodland Scenics. We just really love their trees. But Woodland Scenics, if you're watching this. You can buy trees from lots of sources though. And when you get them, the easiest way to use them on the table is to base your trees on a metal washer to keep them from tipping over. But if you want to use a more advanced, better looking method, you can also drill pins into the bottom of the trees like this. If you want to know more about using pins for your trees, we made a video tutorial of this last year. I love using pins. They do look great, but if you're just starting out at home, please don't stab yourself. I think that your safer bet is to use the metal washer method. And that's it, guys. Those are the three basic terrain elements that you need to start wargaming. In the coming weeks, Keith and I will be back to teach you beginner techniques for stone walls and Viking buildings. If you haven't subscribed to Little Wars TV yet, hit the subscribe button and join us. 